Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, this is going to kind of be part of the Judas Scepter and Joseph's birthright thing, but I'm refuting what he says where he mentions that Joseph's two children were half Egyptians. Well, I think uh, this or possibly the next study will totally refute that. This study is going to be on the origin of the Canaanites. Now, I should mention something real quick. Um, the Philistines were a major branch of the Canaanites and at least some of them were giants. They have found giant skeletons, from what I understand, all over the world. And they used to be prominently displayed in museums up until, oh, I don't know, right around at the end of World War II, you know, maybe the 50s, they were all removed. You know, I guess it doesn't fit in with evolution and anything that proves the Bible true. Well, we got to hide that, you know. Well, they have to hide that, not not me. But uh, let's go to Genesis chapter six. Now, in the previous study I did, I covered Job 38, which proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that in the Old Testament, um, the sons of God are angels. They existed at the foundation of the earth, and Adam didn't exist until at least six days after the earth was created, since he was formed of the dust of the ground, the earth. Uh, Jesus is called a son of God, the only begotten son of God. Adam is called a son of God, well, the son of God, after all, who was his father. And uh, Christians are not called sons of God until they are born again of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And that was thousands of years later. So, and this is one of the doctrines that the so-called demon nominational churches hide more than anything. They absolutely do not want this to get out. I mean, this would, uh, this absolutely wrecks their, well, anybody could be saved. All they got to do is believe. Well, <laughs> you know what? Read James chapter two. You think the devil's you think Satan has fallen angels don't believe in God? They absolutely do. Absolutely. And if you read John, the book of John, the eighth chapter, Jesus told a group of people that they were of their father, the devil. And he says, I'm telling you the truth. He's not calling them names. You know, nah, 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 you're the children of the devil. No. It wasn't a figure of speech either. He wasn't he wasn't joking. He wasn't joking around either. So let's go to Genesis chapter six real quick. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get into. Well, I probably won't do Egypt until the next study. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter six. I mean, you know, people will tell you that the sons of God were just godly men. And then the, the daughters of men were, you know, they were ungodly. So the sons of God, all the men were godly. And then the daughters of men, well, they were all a bunch of wicked. So all the men were righteous and all the women were evil. You know, believing men marrying unbelieving women. And that's the fairy tale that they uh, turn this into, uh, you know, the flood of Noah and all that. 
I mean, it's it's no wonder that uh, very few people believe the Bible anymore. Very, very, very few. I mean, it's sad, but, you know, as long as I'm on YouTube, I'm going to keep plowing away. All right, Genesis chapter 6. You know, and these people say, oh, I'm a New Testament Christian. No, you're a New Testament idiot. Because if you haven't read the Old Testament, which is the foundation, you cannot understand. Well, there, you could find salvation. Believe in Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Yeah, you can, you can find that, but you will have very little understanding. Very little if you don't study the Old Testament. It's one book. You know, God's word is God's word. It's I don't know. What what are you going to what are you going to say, you know? People are lazy, they're stupid. They'd rather watch football and baseball or uh soccer or whatever they want to watch. And you know, men have horribly horribly failed their families and myself included you know they're supposed to be the spiritual head of the family and uh, you know failed miserably so wish i'd have known that uh i wish i would have believed that in the 70s but i didn't all right, so let's go to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, the fallen angels, Job 38, I proved that in a previous study. I mean, you know, sorry. Believing men do not marry unbelieving women and have giants for children. But that's the fairy tales that um, come out of the modern so-called church world. That the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose well, let me tell you something people i don't care if you look into roman mythology or greek mythology they all have uh, the uh, japan japan has the same mythology too that the gods from the sky came down and married the human women. Yeah. What was Hercules? Everybody's heard of Hercules, right? Hollywood makes movies about Hercules, not Samson. Hercules was the son of a human woman and um, a god that came down from the sky. I think it was it Zeus. Well, I think it was Zeus. What was Thor? Thor was the half-human son of Odin and some human woman. And Hollywood makes movies about Thor. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the, what, the Avengers and all that stuff? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> people don't, you know, and then they think these myths came from nowhere I mean really think about it but I can't think of all the other um, I think you um, Achilles I think Achilles was another one of those uh, half human half fallen angel thingies too you know I I mean you you know I haven't read about that stuff in years so i'm just going kind of going by memory but you know all these myths go way back and 
you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack the Giant Killer. What about Paul Bunyan? I mean, there, there are all kinds of, you know, Goliath. There's all kinds of uh, stories about giants out, outside of the Bible, not even just in the Bible, outside of the Bible. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Uh, the Titans, if you read about the Titans, they, uh, they were a race of giants that tried to overthrow their god parents, if I remember correctly. So, you know, you got a bunch of, uh, I think India has a bunch of those stories too. So, all right, let's, let's, yeah, shut up, Bob, quit jibber jabbering and get on, get on with the Bible study. Genesis 6 verse 1, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, see, men, humans, Adamites began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God see the Bible differentiates between sons of God and men I mean here it is almost in the same breath they use two different words you know if the sons of God were men it would say men but they're not they're not the same men are human they're Adamites, and the sons of God are different beings. They're angels. Job 38. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Why would they do this? Well, when you read Genesis 3, um, well, let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, I did a study on Genesis 3, but uh, real quick, Genesis 3 is when the serpent beguiled the woman. That's a very interesting study in and of itself. So Genesis 3 and verse eh, 13. And the Lord God said unto woman, What is this that thou hast done? Oh yeah, Eve uh, ate of the forbidden fruit, right? What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed, cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity. What is enmity? Hatred. It's one of those big fancy King's English words. And I will put enmity. Now remember, God is talking to the serpent. And if you read Genesis, or I'm sorry, Revelation 12, the Bible tells you who the, the serpent, the old that old serpent, the devil and Satan is. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed, did you know the serpent has seed? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. People, right here is a messianic prophecy that one day, Something from the woman's seed would come and crush or bruise the head of the serpent. It shall bruise thy head and shalt and thou shalt bruise his heel. So this is the Lord talking to the serpent. Revelation 12, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. You know, the Bible explains the Bible, if you let it. That's why I don't like commentaries. I do not like commentaries. And all the good old commentaries are gone. You can't find them anymore. The enemy has bought up all the, the publishing houses. 
All of them. It's it's makes me want to cry sometimes. All right, so God just got through talking to the um, woman. Or, I'm sorry, the serpent. Now he's going to talk to the woman. Verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Oh, wait a minute. She just bit a, took a bite out of an apple and he's going to multiply her sorrow with conception. You know? In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. What? And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Uh, who was her desire to be prior to her husband? Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Huh. Now you know why we have all this woman's liberation. And uh, let me tell you something. When things get bad and the cities start burning, all these women that dumped their husbands and went to the courts and uh, took the children away and got child support and alimony and all this other stuff, and they're all alone and they're whoring around with all these different guys uh, just because they couldn't get along with their the guy they married. I knew one girl, uh, not real well, didn't date her, but she was laughing about how stupid men were. Uh, she had been on her third husband and had children with all three of them and was collecting child support from all three of them. Yeah. Yeah, that was her, um, that was her career path. Yeah. Yeah. And she was laughing about not having to work. So, uh, yeah. Well, when the cities start burning and the animals start uh, rioting and running around and killing people, um, they might wish they might wish they had a big strong man around to um, help protect them. So, all right. So here it is. In Genesis 3.15, this is the first mention, my opinion, of a messianic prophecy. This woman's seed is going to bruise the head of the serpent. Some versions say crush. I think you get the idea. So why would the fallen angels want to pollute the bloodline of the chosen seed line of Israel. Why would they want to do that? You know, there's a reason to their madness. And you, you can't, uh, church people just can't swallow this. You know, this is the meat of the Bible. And if you take a baby that's not weaned, that's only been weaned on you know hasn't been weaned off of milk and you give them a piece of meat and it just rots in their stomach they can't digest it maybe it'll turn septic and kill them i don't know verse 6 chapter 6 and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth men and daughters were born unto them that the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Do you know fair is a racial description? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Cinderella, right? Or, I'm sorry, Snow White. Snow White. Snow White. Yeah, Snow White. Mm. Cinderella, that's another, never mind. And they took them wives of all which they choose chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. 
all these transhumanist idiots that think they're uh, going to live forever with their downloading their brains to the cloud and have robot bodies. And uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's their satanic pipe dream. Verse four. There were giants in the earth in those days prior to the flood. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. Huh. There were giants in the earth before the flood. There were giants in the earth after the flood. Goliath, anybody? You think Goliath was just a, a basketball-sized player and David was just some little squirt, maybe four foot nine inches tall? No. No, they were giants, people. Giants. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, after the flood, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Hercules. Hercules. Oh, yeah. Yep, Hollywood will do stories, movies about Thor. They'll do movies about Hercules. But they won't touch Samson with a nine-foot pole. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know, they didn't think about the Lord. They were just thinking about evil 24-7. I guess even when they were asleep and they were dreaming about evil. Verse 6, Genesis 6-6. Six, six. And it repented the Lord that he'd made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. God was sorry for what he's looking at. Yep, you know. And don't fall for that uh, heretics that'll tell you that God repenting means the same thing as when we repent. God does not have wickedness in his life that he needs to repent of. God was sorrowful to look at what his creation had become. He was sorry. It's like, look what they've done to my world. Anybody remember that song? Look what they've done to my song, Ma. Well, if you remember that when it came out, you're old. I think that was the 70s. Melanie, wasn't it? I, I don't remember. Never liked that song. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Boy, I'll tell you what. I, you look around today, and I'm sure the Lord is just as grieved now as he was back then. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. Ooh, but, but, but God is a loving God and he just loves everybody and everything. And, you know, God's not a cruel, evil God that would, you know, no. Now, God just destroyed the earth in a flood, burned up Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. You know what? I'll let you in a little secret. God hates sin. God hates evil. God hates wickedness. Just as much today as he did back then. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace, grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know, I've had people tell me, that the Old Testament is just nothing but law and rules and regulations. And there was no grace or love in the Old Testament. 
Well, right here in Genesis 6, Noah found grace, grace in the eyes of the Lord. Wow. These are the generations. What is the first four? How do you spell generations? What are the first four letters? G-E-N-E. -E. Gene. Generations. That's the same root word where we get genetics or generator. What does a generator do? It creates a power, electricity, right? What are generations? Your family line. I mean, you know, it, language is a very interesting thing, in my opinion. Uh, I guess I'm weird, but, you know, uh, it, you look at it. It's like it, it fits like a glove. People tell me, oh, well, I read the Bible. It just don't make no sense. Well, that's because you haven't gotten on your hands and knees and asked the Lord to give you understanding. Turn off your television. When you look for the Lord more, more than anything else in this world, you'll find him or he'll find you. Yeah. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. Just. That's where we get the word justice. And perfect. Perfect in his generations. Why would the Bible say he was perfect in his generations? Because the bloodlines had become polluted on the earth. But... You can't get any, hardly anybody to teach this nowadays. You know, this is one of the things that convicted me to, to get on YouTube and start teaching the Bible. You know, there was very, very, very few people that taught this stuff. And when I started teaching, I mean, all the old teachers that I used to listen to, they were all dead or getting very, very, very old. You know, like I've told you a few times, I never wanted to be a Bible teacher. I never wanted to be. That wasn't my career path. You know, the pay is uh, the pay is pretty lousy. Let me tell you, and I'm not complaining. Trust me, I'm not complaining. If I was on TBN and a heretic like them, I probably have a a yacht and a a, a, a Learjet. And maybe a mansion on the beach. Who knows? But, uh, you know, you really want to sell your soul to the devil for the things of this world? Really? But one thing I can say is the retirement program is out of this world. The Lord's retirement program is out of this world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, his genes. And Noah walked with God. There's not many people that can, the Bible says that. Uh, Enoch was one of them. And there's two Enochs. There's the good bloodline of Enoch and then there's the bad bloodline of Enoch. And then Abraham uh, I think Abraham walked with God too. Or God walked with Abraham, I guess you could say. So, and Noah begat three sons. Shem. Now, Shem was the, where you get the word Semitic. That's where the word comes from. Semitic, you know. Uh, Semite. So you got Shem, Ham, you know Ham's not kosher. No, uh-uh. Ham is the bad seed. And we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that. And then you got Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh, Japheth wasn't the chosen seed, but they're not the bad, they're not a bad seed line. So 
And there's a verse somewhere in the Bible, I'd have to find it, that um, those of Shem could marry into Japheth and they would be allowed into the kingdom after a certain amount of time. So. All right, so. And I had to go to this because we're going to take a look at uh, Ham's line and we're going to look at Japheth too. Uh, Shem, like I say, when you go trace back uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, Christ lineage all the way back to Adam, it's through Shem every single time. Shem. I mean, Shem is of the three sons, Shem is the, the chosen line. When you take a look at Ham, Ham is the father, or I guess you could say, well, yeah, the, the ancestor, father, ancestor of the Canaanites and the Egyptians. Yeah. And we're going to cover that later. Um, the Canaanites, and, and what I find interesting, God must have told Satan's children, or the devil's kids, devils, plural, um, where the promised land was, pro where the promised land was going to you know, be, Israel. Because when they came out of Egypt, the Canaanites were already in the land. They had built cities. They had planted gardens, vineyards. They'd planted fruit trees. Everything's sitting there. They built houses, roads, I guess. I, I don't know. So Israel was told to go into the land, take it. Take it from the devil's kids and possess it. But don't marry their kids. Don't marry their daughters. But uh, girls, you know how guys are. Take a look, you know. What's the old saying? You can't judge a book by its cover? Oh, yeah. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Uh, when you take a look into the myths of old about the giants, the giants were killing and eating people. Yeah, I don't know how true that is. I mean, but, you know, there's, there's a reason why the Lord wiped out the earth. The earth was filled with violence. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense. You know, the giants were killing people and having them for dinner. You know? Verse 12. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh, all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Huh, why would it say that? Why would it say that? You know all these weird uh, looking creatures that uh, in ancient mythology you know, lions with uh, wings and birds' heads and, uh, you know, I, it makes you wonder, were, were they doing genetic manipulation back in these days, the fallen angels? I mean, I don't know. But it says, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. Well, obviously not all flesh, because Noah, his three sons, and their wives is not going to be among all flesh. 
So, you know, all does not always mean all. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 10. We're looking at um, the family lines after the flood. Well, you know what? Why don't we take a look at the... Um, well, yeah, let's, let's, let's do Genesis 10. I got something else I want to bring up, so... Verse 1. Uh, oh, by the way... Do you know that the Bible does not tell you who the children, who, who the wives were of these sons? Who, the, who were the wives? What was their bloodlines? The Bible doesn't say. Uh, Shem's line had to be good because all the patriarchs of the Bible went through Shem. Uh, Japheth seemed like they were okay because... They were okay for to be marriage partners, but Ham's line uh, was forbidden. I mean, they were they were bad news. Ham's line was. I've never seen anybody through Ham's line uh, that was to be accepted. They were the Canaanites. They were the Philistines. They were the Hittites. They were all the ites. I mean, bad, bad. I, I suspect that Ham probably intermarried with the bad seed line. I mean, it, it just, it makes sense. But the very fact that the Bible doesn't tell you who married who, it just doesn't, I don't know. You know, you have to kind of read between the lines. Verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And I'm going to prove to you that Ham is the father of the Egyptians. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog. Hmm. Magog. Didn't we read about the um, Magog and Gog invading the land of Israel? Yeah, we did, didn't we? That's kind of important. That's kind of important. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Medai, and Javan. Um, Bob's note real quick, I can't prove it from the Bible, but supposedly Javan was tied, believed to be tied into Greece. So some of the Greeks were probably of Japheth, others maybe through Shem, I don't know. I mean, there's a reason why the New Testament was in Greek and not Hebrew. There's a reason for that. So Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tyrus and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, A-S-H-K-E-N-A-Z. Do you know there's an entire branch of Eastern European Jewry that called themselves the Ashkenazi Jews? Yeah. They are your Eastern European, Yiddish-speaking uh, Jewry. Look it up. There's the um, Shepardic, which were the uh, Jews of Northern Africa, you know, around Morocco and places like that. And then your Eastern European Jews are the Ashkenazi. And uh, you just take Ashkenaz and put an eye on the end of it. 
And then look at the last four letters of that word. N A, yeah, Z, and then take uh, the last letter and be an I. And it makes you wonder, yeah, what does that spell? I don't even want to say that word. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Riphoth and Togar, Togarma, Togarma, oh, tongue tied today. And the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarshish. Uh, Tarshish is a, um, believe it or not, if I remember correctly, in the book of Jonah, um, Jonah was supposed to go east, but he went west. And he was supposed, he took a ship to, if I remember correctly, Tarshish. Tarshish is uh, supposedly an Old Testament, uh, an old name for the area that is now Spain. You know, I don't know how true that is, but I'm just throwing that out there. So, Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and Dodonim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, and in their nations. Hmm. Okay. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim. Uh, Mizraim, if memory serves me correctly, is a, another name for um, Egypt. The sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. Canaan. The Canaanites. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Ramah, and Sabtika, and the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush began Nimrod. And he began to be a mighty one in the earth. Uh, Nimrod supposedly there's a lot of legends about Nimrod. You can look it up. Supposedly, he was a really evil guy. But the Bible doesn't speak much on him. And Cush began Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Uh, some say he was a hunter of men's souls. I don't know. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, or Babel. Um, Babel means confusion. Remember the Tower of Babel? You know, they were building a tower to, to heaven, a king, you know, a stairway to heaven. Oh, yeah, we're going to come to heaven your, our way. Not your way, Lord, but our way. Led Zeppelin, we're going to build a stairway to heaven. Oh, yeah. No, you're making a stairwell to hell. And what did, what did God do with the Tower of Babel? He scattered the people and confused their languages, right? And from what I understand... Uh, Babel and Babylon have some kind of connection there. Some people say that they are um, the same. Well, Babylon was built on the uh, incomplete Tower of Babel. I don't know how true that is or if it was nearby or I don't know. But wouldn't surprise me. At the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Cana, C A I N, Cain, E H, in the land of Shinar. Shinar was um, where Babylon was. Out of that land went forth Asher, who builded 
Nineveh. What was Nineveh? Nineveh was the capital city of uh, the Assyrians. They were the ones that took northern, the northern kingdom of Israel into captivity. Perhaps you've heard of Nineveh in the book of Job. Or, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Jonah. Jonah went to Nineveh and preached repentance to those people. You know, Jonah that got swallowed by probably the whale. And what was the god of Nineveh? Dagon. Uh, it's funny, you take dragon, remove the R, and you got Dagon. Um, what did Dagon look like? Oh, well, you ever seen Disney's uh, The Little Mermaid? Her father? That's what Dagon looked like. From the waist up, he was a man. From the waist down, he was a fish. He was the fish god. And uh, can you imagine Jonah getting spit out of a whale? And there's fishermen on the seashore, on the beach. And, and they see this whale beach itself and then spit out this prophet of God. And then the, the, the whale swims away. Uh, yeah. And then this guy's walking around preaching repentance. Yeah. And you wonder why the Ninevites uh, listen to the Lord to repent. Yeah. You know, well, I did a Bible study on uh, Jonah and the whale. Matter of fact, that was one of my very, very, very first Bible studies. Uh, probably about 10 years ago. I did, a, did it as a part of a radio show. I've had uh, a minimum of, what did I have, two radio shows, one in Kentucky and one down here. Didn't do anything, but I also used to write for a uh, Christian newspaper. But uh, sadly, the lady moved, and from what I understand, I believe she quit um, printing the paper. It was actually pretty good. I liked it. I found it in a truck stop in Tennessee. Nice lady, too. I, yeah. Uh, makes you wonder. So out of that land went forth Asher and built it Nineveh and the city Rehoboth and Kala. And recent between Nineveh and Kala, the same is a great city. And Mizraim begat Ludum and Ananim and uh, Lahabim and Naph to him. Boy, I don't know where they get these names from. And Pathrusim and Kashluhim, out of whom came Philistum. So Philistum, you know where this is where the Philistines came from. Philistum, the Philistines. And the Philistines were the giants. Goliath was a Philistine. You know, King David facing Goliath, he was a Philistine. And Torum. And Canaan, verse 15, and Canaan begat Sidon, Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. Heth was the father or the progenitor of the Hittites. Matter of fact, uh, Isaac and his wife Rebecca, was it Rebecca? Isaac? I forget. I think, yeah, I think it was Rebecca. She was complaining, we're going to cover this in a little bit, that uh, if Jacob, Jacob had married uh, a daughter of Heth like Esau did, that her life was good for nothing. Pollu polluted bloodline. But boy, you can't you can't teach this in any of the churches. You get kicked out awful quick. The children of Heth, they were the uh, the Hittites. So Canaan begat Sidon his firstborn in Heth, and the Jebusite, 
and the Amorite and the Girgashite and the Hivite and the Archite and the Sinite. S I N I T E. Can you imagine belonging to a tribe called the Sinites? The Sinites. Uh, that's what I call truth and advertising. <laughs> you know, and, and Sidon was bad news too. Verse 18. And the Arvadite and the Zemurite and the Hamathite and afterwards were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon as thou comest to Gerar unto Gaza, well, some of the people that live in Gaza are uh, Canaanites, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was filled with Canaanites, people. You wonder why God destroyed them? Uh, yeah. As thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma and Zeboam, even unto Lasha, these are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Huh. You know what? All those names that I mentioned, you're going to see some of those names uh, popping up again. Oh, yeah. Under Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, Eber was the, um, that's where you get the word Hebrew, Eber. Sometimes the H's were silent. Sometimes, you know. Under Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash, and Arphaxad began Selah, and Selah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, P-E-L-E-G, for in his days was the earth divided in his days were the earth divided have you ever heard of the theory of continental drift supposedly with satellites you know if you believe that stuff uh, they can see that the continents are moving away from each other uh so yeah there's supposedly the continents are drifting away from each other and i wonder if um the the, the flood of noah had anything to do with the continents uh splitting apart because if you some people say that there was a super continent that they called pangea or whatever and i did a bible study on this too but uh Supposedly, if you take all the continents and kind of push them together, they roughly kind of sort of fit together. So, uh, makes you wonder. And uh, I guess the Lord has a real sense of humor because uh, when you go to, when you look at Australia, boy, you got some weird, uh, the most deadliest snakes in the world are Australia. They got they got uh, monitor lizards. They got box jellyfish. I mean, you you got to be a tough old bird to live in Australia. They got some nasty, I think five or six of the deadliest snakes in the world live in Australia. I mean, you know, so I don't know. Um, the name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begat... Allah, Modad, and Shelef, and Hazar, Maveth, and Jera, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Obal, and 
Abba, whatever, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobah. Uh, all these were the sons of Juktan. And their dwelling was from Misha, as thou goest from Sephar, a mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. All right, let's uh, read Genesis 15. You know, when I do these Bible studies, a lot of times I just got a general idea of where I'm going to go with this. And then, you know, I start looking up Bible verses and the next thing you know, I'm off in another direction. So, Genesis 15, verse 1, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram. Now remember, Abram, uh, his name was changed to Abraham. Abraham, father of many nations. Not all, not one, many After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield. What's a shield? A shield protects, protects you from uh, uh, sword blows and uh, darts, fiery darts of the devil. Uh, you know, uh, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. In the uh, book of Ephesians, you know, Ephesus, the Greek city. Um, what did uh, what did Paul say? You know, they they love to tell you, oh, Paul's a false apostle. Ephesians chapter six, verse fourteen. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, where's the, where, what's the breastplate on? It's on your chest. What's next to your chest? Your heart, right? And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet. What does the helmet cover? Your head, your brain, your thinking, right? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Do you have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, or do you have a butter knife like the NIV? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Genesis 15, 1, after these things, the word of the Lord came at Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? Now, remember, this guy's like 90-something years old. Uh, you know, 90-year-olds generally don't have a lot of children, you know? Unless, of course, you like Rod Stewart, you know, he likes those leggy blonde girls. I think he's, I don't know how many times he's been married, but uh, yeah, he's like 60, 70 years old having children with whatever, 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, I don't know. I don't, I can't keep up with Hollywood. Don't want to, but, you know, I hear things. What wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given me no seed, no children, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. 
And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Has anybody ever been out in the middle of the desert and looked up in the sky at the stars? You can't see this in the city. It just don't work that way. You don't see very many stars in a city because of all the street lights and what have you. But you go out in the desert where there's not a city around for 20, 25, 30 miles. You know why they call the Milky Way the Milky Way? Because there are so many stars in it, it looks like milk, white milk, not chocolate milk. Looks like milk. Yeah, it's bright. And I know a little bit about this because when I was in elementary school, sixth grade, I loved astronomy. Absolutely loved it. I begged mom and dad, I don't remember if it was a birthday or Christmas, but they bought me a, a Tasco telescope. And I used to check out the stars and all that kind of stuff. I love that. I, I love that. Boy, I'll tell you what. You go out in the middle of the desert, there literally seems to be millions of stars. Millions. And God said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Your children's going to be like the stars in the sky and the sand on the sea. Let me tell you, people, you go to the beach in Florida and there's millions of grains of sand. God promised Abraham that would be like his seed. But the churches want you to think that a few million you-know-whos over in the Middle East is all of Abraham's children, all of all everything. They make God a liar. But God's not the liar. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And that and I'm, you know, when I look in the mirror, I see a liar. Because it's every man a liar. Verse 6. And he, Abram, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. You know, Abram believed the Lord, and it was counted to him for righteousness. We're supposed to have the breastplate of righteousness, right? Didn't we read that in Ephesians? Oh, yeah. Believing in the Lord is counted for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take thee an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Don't ask me why three years old. I have no idea. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror, horror of great darkness fell upon him. Yeah, sounds like uh, what's getting ready to fall upon the United States and Europe. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed, thy children, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Who's a stranger? What is a stranger in the strange land that the ground be in for four hundred years and get afflicted? Uh, the days of Moses, you know, when when Israel went into Egypt, and yeah, God knows the beginning to the end he knows he knows he knows the beginning and the end the alpha and the omega he knows it all this is like a to him it's like a, a giant play 
and we're all kind of like bit part players and we're getting we're getting tested you know for him to give somebody eternal life in paradise what kind of a gift that is he, I guess, you know, he wants us to know that we're going to be faithful, unlike um, the devil who tried to kill God. Um, that's That plan didn't work out too good. But, uh, yeah. And they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, Egypt, will I judge... And afterward, they shall come out with great substance. See, when Israel came out of Egypt, they were glad to get rid of them. Oh, you guys need jewel, uh, gold and jewelry to, to do sacrifices for the temple? Here, take it. Take it all. Please, take it all and leave. Get out of here. Please, as fast as you can. I mean, Egypt was pretty much destroyed by the time the Lord was through with them. I mean, they lost the firstborn of everything. All the, all their, all their animals and livestock and, and their firstborn children. And Pharaoh's army was drowned in the Red Sea. I mean, you know, uh, the crops had been wiped out. You know, the frogs, the flies, the lice. The locusts, I mean, Egypt was pretty much destroyed. They were like, please leave, please, please leave as fast as you can. Don't kill us all, please. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. And let me tell you something, people. You take a look at the plagues of Revelation, there's a lot of similarities to the plagues of Egypt in that book. Egypt uh, in Exodus and Revelation, there's a, I did a Bible study on it. Yeah, a playlist. I've done a lot of playlists. I've been doing these videos for, what, 10 years? About, about 10 years? You know, got a lot of stuff. You know, you don't have to listen just to the new stuff. I got a lot of old stuff. Some of them are not too bad, if you ask me. Spent a lot of time on them. So, yeah, I, I, that was that was an interesting study for me, comparing the uh, comparing and contrasting uh, the plagues of Egypt with the plagues of Revelation. Yeah, and also that nation, Egypt. Whom they shall serve, Israel, will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. And thou, Abram, shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come again. Uh, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Who are the Amorites? They were children of Ham, Canaan. And it shall come to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. The Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites and the Hittites. What did, what, who did Esau? Esau Edom, who did Esau, Jacob's uh, brother, his twin brother, who did he marry? Hittite women, two of them. I bet you they were good looking too. I bet you they were. And the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephams, R-E-P-H-A-I-M-S. Ah, the Rephams. Do you know what that has reference to? Giants. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look. Uh, excuse me. I got a phone call, so I kind of lost my train of thought. Uh, but this Remfem, 
Uh, you can read about this in Acts 7 and verse 43. Uh, Stephen was condemning the you know who's for their unfaithfulness. And we read, Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch. Now, who was Moloch? Moloch was the god that demanded uh, burning your children alive, sacrifice, burn, uh, burnt human sacrifice on an altar to Satan. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star. What kind of star? What kind of star do the you know who's carry? Take a look at the their flag. And the star of your god, Remphan, R E M P H A N, Remphan. You look that word up in the Greek. It has reference to giants. Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond. Babylon. Mystery Babylon the Great, remember? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, you know, Moloch, um, Moloch was uh, one of the reasons why the Lord was not too happy about, uh, you know, what Israel was doing. All right. Uh, is there, uh, he, St uh, Stephen was basically quoting uh, Amos, A-M-O-S, chapter 5 and verse 26, uh, where the prophet said, But ye, the you know who's, but ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chayun, your images, the star, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. He's basically quoting Amos. So, uh, let's go back to Genesis 15, verse 20. And the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Remphams, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Canaanites, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. All those ites. Uh, not good. Not good. And you know what? I haven't even... Um, Wow, I haven't even uh, touched on all the stuff the Bible says about the Canaanites. So, uh, let's take a look at Genesis 24 real quick. And I guess we'll make this a part A, and then I'll do a part B on the Canaanites. Uh, Genesis 24, verse 1. And Abraham was old. Now remember, God changed Abram's name to Abraham, father of many nations. And Abram was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abram, Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, and he said, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. I guess that's sort of like uh, probably an Old Testament way of like, putting your hand on your heart and swearing to God. Verse 3, And I will make thee swear, Abraham's telling his servant, And I will make thee swear by the God of, uh, by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not, thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. I want you to swear before the God of heaven and earth that you will not allow my son to take a daughter of the Canaanites. I want you to swear to God. Well, that's the Bob translation, but, you know, and then the churches will say, well, you know, the Canaanites were okay, but but they just, you know, they, they were worshiping the wrong God. Uh, well, if that was true, why not just send them evangelists and tell them about the real, the, you know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of heaven and earth? No, don't marry these people. Satanic seed line. That thou shalt not, not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. 
But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence, from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bringest, uh, bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. Yeah, go take a wife for my son from my family, from my kindred. And if the woman be not uh, will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath, you know, the promise, only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten, cam uh, ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he rose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Uh, Nahor was a relative of Abraham. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, uh, even the time when the women go out to draw water. And he, the servant, said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall, she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yeah. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebecca, Rebecca came out who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the son of uh, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. See, the Lord, the Lord's setting things up here. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the, who's the fairest of them all? Oh, Snow White. Snow White. Yeah. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when he... And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again under the well to draw water and drew for all the camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to, to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Well, dude, you wanted a sign from God. I think you got your sign from God. Verse 23, uh, 22. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold and said, Whose daughter art thou? You know, whose daughter are you? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, moreover, unto him, We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. So she's basically saying, Yeah, we got room for you to live in, and we got food for your camels too. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren see you know the lord the lord sets all this stuff up 
And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. Now, remember, Laban is going to give his daughters to um, Isaac's son, Jacob Israel. Oh, yeah. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And oh, by the way, in the Hebrew, you know what Laban means? White. W-H-I-T-E. And his name was Laban, and Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his daughter's, uh, his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the, the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well, and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he upgirded his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. So evidently he had uh, a cup, probably at least two men with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine Aaron. And he said, speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whom in whose land I dwell. Hmm. But thou shalt go into my father's house and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Then shalt, uh, shalt thou be clear from this thine uh, my oath when thou comest to my kindred. And if they will not give thee one, thou shalt be clear from thy oath, from my oath. And I came this day to the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way, which I do, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both Drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down to the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare uh, unto him. And I put the earrings upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And by the way, those bracelets were worth a lot of money. A lot of money. 48. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee good or bad. You know, this thing's from the Lord. You know, we can't stop it, you know. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, clothing, and gave them to Rebekah. He, he also gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the man that, uh, men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. 
you know so they ate that night got a good night's sleep and then he's in the morning they wake up and he says okay let's go send me away unto my master and her brother and her mother said let the damsel abide with us for a few days at the least 10 after that she shall go you know you know and they said um and he said unto them hinder me not seeing the lord hath prospered my way send me away that i may go to my master and they said we will call the damsel and will inquire at her mouth and they called rebecca and said unto her wilt thou go with this man and she said i will go see no forced marriages and they sent away rebecca their sister and her nurse and abraham's servants servant and his men and they blessed rebecca and said unto her listen to this carefully this is a prophecy thou art our sister be thou the mother of thousands of millions thousands of millions not a few uh dozen not a not a dozen or dozen and a half millions over in the middle east uh-uh no uh-uh be thou the mother of thousands of millions and let thy seed thy children possess the gate of those which hate them do you know that there are those that hate true israel oh yeah and rebecca arose and her damsels and they rode upon the camels and followed the man and the servant took rebecca and went his way and isaac came from the way to the well la herol for he dwelt in the south country and isaac went out to meditate in the fields at the even time and he lifted up his eyes and saw and behold the camels were coming and rebecca lifted up her eyes and when she saw isaac she lighted off the camel she jumped off the camel for she had said unto the servant what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us and the servant said had said it is my master therefore she took a veil and covered herself see she was um she wasn't a um a canaanite whore walking around in a a thong bathing suit no she covered herself in a veil and the servant told isaac all things that he had done and isaac brought her into his mother sarah's tent and took rebecca and she became his wife and he loved her and isaac was comforted comforted after his mother's death and there you have it people you know don't marry the canaanites they're bad news they're the the poisoned satanic serpent line the seed the seed of evildoers those that hate israel the curse of genesis 3 15 and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between her seed and thy seed and to most people that's a joke well it's not a joke people this is bible reality here this is the meat of the bible this is this is this is the heavy duty stuff so all right well all blessings praise glory and honor to god the father and his only begotten son jesus who is the christ the lamb of god slain before the foundation of the world all blessings praise glory and honor in jesus name amen this is the end of uh part a of the canaanites